mental. This business model thing. How do you decide business model? Clients are going to tell us nonsense and get us there. The second category or criteria relates to the instrument. It's got to be solely payments of principal and interest. If the payment is more than principal and interest, you are not amortized cost. Now, us technical people, we like acronyms. So the way I look at my two criteria, I call the first one held to collect. So it must be within a business model where I am holding to collect. And my second requirement, SPPI, solely payments of principal and interest. Now, remember this HTC SPPI? That's the, that's the criteria. If you go through those two, you can use amortized cost. Let's talk of HTC first. What is your business model? Business model, maybe, let's go to this one. It doesn't depend on intention. Again, because intention is highly speculative. What is business model? It's something determined by key management personnel. It's how your bank is set up. It's a matter of fact. Why did you buy these bonds? You have these government bonds because you want to trade them or you want to collect interest. It is a bigger question than what's your intention. Why have you been set up? Now, in, in the, I think in 2000, and, from the 2000 to 2007 onwards, people used to originate loans to sell them. So although the nature of the asset is a receivable, but what would they originate loans to sell them? So their business model wasn't held to collect. But your conventional bank or your conventional debtor, where you, if you are not a bank and you're selling goods on credit, why are you selling goods on credit or what's your, your means of that? You're holding that asset because what? You want to collect the cash flow. With a normal loan, you want to collect the cash flow. What do you do if the guy doesn't pay you? You phone him, please pay me. In a, in a, in a not held to collect scenario, what will you do? You don't care if he doesn't pay you, probably sell it. Or the fair value goes down and you, you wait. You understand? It is a different way you approach things. So, okay, what is business model? It's as determined by key management personnel. Where does that word come again? It comes in the related party standard. The related party standard defines key management personnel as those people charged with governance. So it's not the guy on the front desk or the teller in the bank. It's those people at the top, the ALCO people, the people who make the big decisions in the bank. Why have they given you permission to open up a retail banking division or provide these mortgage loans? The level of determination doesn't depend on individuals. And the next point is important. You could have portfolios. That means you could have bought some government bonds to hold to maturity in the old sense of the word, where you are extracting the cash flows. Why are you doing that? Because government is a safe bet. And there could be some cash flows, or some, sorry, bonds that you're holding because you speculate. So you could have portfolios. And these bonds would sit in two different departments, potentially, of your bank. You couldn't mix them up. So IFRS 9 anticipates there could be a portfolio. Is this the same as health to maturity? No. No, no, no. It's not the same as health to maturity under IS 39. Under IS 39, when something was held to maturity, the moment you sold it, you were tainted. You can't use health to maturity for two years. This says, no, 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 wait a minute. No need to hold all the assets to maturity. You can sell now and then. It's all right. You may sell, but let's look at the reason why you sell. What the standard does tell you, listen, you're not going to meet help to collect if you are trying to get to sell this thing. If you are holding this bond and you are waiting for the right moment to sell it, no, no, then you're not holding it to collect. You understand? Then you're not holding it to collect. They also say that if you evaluate this bond on a fair value basis, no, 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 then you lie. You can't argue that you're holding it to collect. And obviously, a speculative trading portfolio is definitely not held to collect. Guidance. We're saying, how do you decide this in practice? I mean, this is what pe worries people. They, people like rules. They like the old definitions, right? 
How do you get something into health to collect? Well, we've got to look at management stated policies and objectives of the portfolio, how management themselves evaluate the performance, how, what is management strategy? Are they trying to collect the money or not? Yes, there are going to be sales happening. What's the degree and frequency of the sale? If they are selling on a regular basis, no, 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 you can't be saying that it's how to collect. Why are you selling? If you are selling for no reason, that's a problem. You're selling to make some money, you are defying the fact that you're holding it to collect. And when do you sell it? So these are important questions you need to ask to frame your mind along what your business model is. Yes, that is subjective. So that's the first requirement, help to collect. You need a business model, you look at your business model, are you holding the asset to collect? The second requirement is very, very interesting. The contractual terms of the instrument must give rise to only payments of principal and interest. What is principal? The amount outstanding. What is interest? Interest is now defined. And when they say interest, it's interest as they envisage here, which is only this. It's only a return for time value and credit risk. Anything else, if there's a return for anything else, you fail SPPI. You fail it. So the return on the instrument must only be for time value and credit risk. Let me give you a few examples. I've got a few examples on the slides, but I want to just maybe talk about it. The moment there is no one-to-one -one correlation between time value and credit risk, the moment you fail that, you fail SPPI. The moment there's leverage, you fail SPPI. Let's look at two, three examples. Example one, I have a bond. The bond resets every year based on inflation. Is that, will that meet solely payments of principal and interest? I have the asset every year. No, no, I mean, they're giving me an interest rate. The interest rate changes. If the inflation increases, the interest rate increases. Isn't inflation part of time value? So if it moves because of inflation, fine. If, it mo if I'm in Pakistan and it moves based on US inflation, there's a problem. It is not time value of Pakistan. You understand that? There's a problem. That's leverage. It's not one to one. You get my point there? There's a derivative there. There's an embedded derivative. That's what they're asking you to find. Is it normal? There's another example. If I have a convertible bond, I'm holding a convertible bond. The bond gives me interest, but it can be converted into, even let's even say, a fixed number of shares. Is this going to meet the requirement of solely payments of principal and interest? What do you think? Yes? No? It doesn't feel right. Let me tell you why. Let me explain to you why. If I had to give you a loan without the conversion feature, I charge you a rate. If I give you a loan, with the conversion feature or without the conversion, there will be a different rate, isn't it? The person with the conversion feature will get a lower rate because he's got the equity kicker. So his rate will be different and his rate is time value of money, it's credit risk and it's also the option price. So the person who is the convertible debt or convertible bond will not meet SPPI. Here's another example. If I have, I'm holding a loan, I'm holding a bond. If the profit of the company is, is over 1 billion, you pay me 5%. If it's more than 1 billion and less than 2 billion, you pay me 10%. If it's more than 2 billion and up to 5 billion, you pay me 3%. Is that solely payment of principal and interest? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Is it linked to time value? No. What is it linked to? The performance of the company, it fails. SPPI. You understand that? Does that make sense? Let's say I have a bond. It changes, the rate, interest rate changes according to that company's credit rating. Will that meet, my interest rate fluctuates on an annual basis. Will that meet SPPI? Yes, because that's credit 